Graphs of sine functions. Using our knowledge of exact values, what we can do is we can use these to plot what a sine function looks like as a graph. So the first thing I'm going to do, it says here, using the exact values, fill in the values, ooh, values, 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 on the table on the right. So let's see how well we can remember how things work in radians and then the values therein. Remembering, of course, that whenever we want to use our exact values, we should always draw our exact values triangle. 1, 1, root 2, root 3, 2, pi on 6, pi on 3, pi on 4, pi on 4. For a little handy thing to remember. And similarly, if I go and take my unit circle, that is 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. So, radians of zero, thankfully is zero. This is pi on six, this is pi on two, this is uh, now 150 is the same as saying pi take away pi on six. So that's gonna be five pi on six. That's gonna be pi. That's going to be pi plus pi on six. So that's seven pi on six. Three pi on two. This is two pi take away pi on six. So that's 11 pi on six. And then we've got 2 pi. So you possibly can figure out why I've chosen these particular values. The reason is, is that we know that sine of 30 degrees or pi on 6 opposite over hypotenuse. So we can look at our exact values triangle. There's pi on 6 and 1 divided by 2. So it's a half. So it's a nice fraction. It's not square rooty at all. So, uh, sine zero is going to be zero. I may as well do the uh, unit circle ones. Sine of 90 degrees, or pi on two, is going to be uh, one, and then it becomes zero again at 180, and then it becomes negative one, and then back to zero. For pi on six, it becomes a half. In 150, it's in the second quadrant. If you remember that sine is positive in the second quadrant, so therefore that's going to be a half. 210, that's in the third quadrant, that's going to be negative, and in the fourth quadrant it's also going to be negative. So now we've filled in that table. Plot the graph of y equals sine theta on the axes below. Join the graph using smooth curves. So we're going to use that table that we established earlier to go and plot so we have zero, zero. So this is all in degrees because it's got 360. So my coordinates are going to be... So just in case you didn't see what I was doing there, the coordinates for this graph is going to be whatever the angle is uh, in degrees or radians and what the sine value is. So 360 and zero is our last one. So we're going to do this accordingly. So 30, half, got to ignore 60, 91, 150 is a 0.5, 180, 210.5, 270 is one, uh, 330, negative 0.5, and there's 360. So hopefully you'll see that it's a, it's, it looks like it's gonna make a really nice little pattern of curved here. So I'm going to go and you do it with my best of my ability to actually. There's our sine curve. All sine curves are basically the same shape. They've just been either translated or dilated as per the requirements of the question. So there's a few things about this, these sorts of graphs we need to know in terms of terminology. The first of our terminologies is a thing called the period. So the period is simply when does the cycle start and stop? The period is indicated here. So essentially it goes up and then down, and down and then back up and it will repeat itself over and over again. We calculate the period for a sine graph as being 2 pi over n, where n is whatever number is in front of the x in the brackets. This n in sine will either make it stretched out, if that n is a value between 0 and 1, if it's a fraction, or it will shrink it. 
if it's a number greater than 1. The amplitude is the distance from the vertical midpoint of the graph to the maximum, symbolized by A. So what does that mean in plain English? Well, the amplitude, the vertical midpoint, so you can see this graph as it goes up and then down, the vertical midpoint here is the x-axis, that's the middle of the graph there. So the amplitude is simply this distance, and it's also, technically speaking, the distance down there, but it's that half a, half a distance there. And this has a amplitude of 1, and we usually have that number at the front. So the, in the case, this is y, because this is y equals sine theta. So basically, n is 1, and a is 1 in this instance. Do you use degrees or radians when sketching? Well, it depends on the demands of the question. And this is something that a lot of students accidentally fall into. Usually it's a domain that will give things away. The domain will, uh, as to where we're supposed to sketch it will suggest where or if you use degrees or radians. So for example, if you see a domain like this one, which says zero x 2 pi, that indicates that you should have everything in radians. If, however, it says something along the lines of 120 degrees or things like that, has the degree symbol, then you should be using degrees. When sketching sine graphs, it is usually not advised to make a table of values. Just like when you learn to do a parabola, you know how to do the sketch or learn how to do a cubic or a quartic or things like that. Similarly, with a sine graph, there are some ways and tricks and means to be able to do it rather quickly. One of the things you need to do is to find the amplitude, A, whatever number is at the front, find out what the period is, then divide that period into four segments. Because at every odd quarter, there's a turning point, and every even quarter, there's an x-intercept. And if the value of a is less than zero, it is upside down. One small caveat with this, uh, the, this quick way is we are assuming there are no translations so that the graph has not moved to the left or to the right or up or down. Example, sketch one complete cycle of the following and state the period and amplitude period and amplitude is probably the first thing I would do. There's a big old 2 at the front there, so the amplitude is going to be 2. There is no number next to the x inside the brackets, so n will be equal to 1, so therefore the period will be 2 pi divided by 1, which is 2 pi. Now what I've done is I've put little, uh, divided the x-axis into approximate quarters. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the period into quarters. So often the way I do this is I do halves and halves. So what's half of 2 pi? That is a pi. What's half of pi? Pi on 2. What's in between pi and 2 pi? Well, that's a 3 pi on 2. The amplitude is 2. So it's going to have a 2 up here and a 2 down here. It's going to have, uh, so for every odd quarter, it's going to be a turning point. The regular sine graph starts from the middle to the top and then back to the middle and then down and then back up. So I'm just going to plot out my points here. You notice there I haven't bothered working, you know, trying to make it super accurate with a half or things like that. But that's okay. Here we go. There it is there. And there. There is our graph. Uh, it doesn't matter if your graph doesn't look absolutely beautifully curved as long as it's clear and as per usual we should get into the habit of using coordinate form whenever we have a graph because we can lose marks for that. There we go. Y equals sine 8x. Well, this time the, there's an 8 on the inside. Now, the, there's no number on the outside. The amplitude is 1. The period here is equal to 2 pi divided by 8, which is equal to pi on 4. So that means the largest value that we have for this cycle, or one complete period, is pi on 4. So, but what I'm going to do is you'll notice here, I'm pretty much going to sketch the exact same graph. Again, I'm going to divide this into quarters. 
put pi on 4 over there. So again, I start with what's half of pi on 4? So half of, four, half of pi on 4 divided by 2 will be pi on 8. What's half of pi on 8? It's a pi on 16. And so therefore, we need to go and add another pi on 8 to that. So that's going to be 3 pi on 16. And our amplitude's 1, negative 1. Again, we haven't flipped it upside down or anything like that. So it's exact same pattern once again. There we go, making sure that joins up nicely. And again, I'm going to put in my coordinates. So you'll notice there I've pretty much drawn the exact same shape as the other graph that what I've done, but you'll notice that it's shrunk considerably. The period is no longer two pi, it's at pi on four. That is because it's been dilated by a factor of one eighth from the y-axis. So, but because I only have to draw one cycle, I can zoom in that x-axis uh, as much as I like. So I'm just gonna use the exact same template as I did before. Y equals negative sine X over five. Now this looks a little bit complicated until you actually rewrite it as negative one fifth sine X. Now in that case, I know my amplitude is one fifth. Now you might be saying, but wait a minute, Mr. Ennis, isn't it negative one fifth because there's a minus sign? Ah, there's the trick. That is not the amplitude. That negative sign is just telling me that the graph is upside down. So I'm just gonna say it's reflected in the x-axis. And this reminds me that we're gonna be drawing an upside down sine graph. The period is two pi over one because there's no value next to that x, so there's two pi. The amplitude, that means the largest will be one fifth, the smallest will be one fifth. Now this time, it's going upside down. So it actually goes like this. And here we are. And there's our graph. Put in all of our coordinates. And there's the graph of negative sine uh, x over five. Y equals seven sine one third X. So the amplitude is equal to seven. The period, now the period's interesting because it's two pi divided by one third. And if you know about dividing fractions, that's the same as saying two pi over one divided by one third, which is two pi over one times by three over one, which will be equal to six pi. So it's actually stretched out the graph uh, whereas when it was eight, it was shrinking the graph incredibly. Again, I've gone and separated my graph into approximate quarters. So there we've got, oh, it's got a bit smeary over here, six pi. So six pi is here, uh, three pi is there, because it's half of six pi. Half of three pi, well, that's 1.5 pi, or three pi over two. So therefore, this what's in between five and six pi? Well, that's 4.5 pi. So what's 4.5? Well, that'd be nine pi over two. The amplitude is seven, negative seven. And then we fill in the coordinates. And there's our graph. Sketch the following. Now this one has a very specific domain. It says zero to two to r, f t equals three sine two pi t. Oh, so we're now dealing with T's instead of X's, but it's still the same thing, that's okay. But we have been given a restricted domain. So, uh, the first thing to do is to get the amplitude, which in this case is three. The period is gonna be two pi divided by two pi, which is equal to one. So this is one of these, whenever you see a, an, when inside of a sine or a cosine or tangent, they've done, put a pi in there. What it does is it changes the, uh, the sort of the x-axis instead of being in terms of pi into whole numbers, which is interesting. So now interesting here, it says that the period is one. So 
Normally I'd be just drawing one cycle and I could separate this into thirds, but it actually wants me to draw it all out to two. So I'm gonna to have to draw two whole cycles. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna label that as one. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna label that as two. Uh, and, but I'm still going to make each section approximately, break it into approximate quarters. So that's a half. That's three over two. Uh, this we need to uh, get into a half. So I'm fortunately snooking myself. That's going to be a half in there, half in there, half here, half here. So that's going to be a quarter. That's going to be uh, three quarters. This is going to be uh, between one and 1.5. It's going to be five quarters. And this is going to be uh, seven quarters and then we get to two. Notice there, there's no pies in there whatsoever. That's because the period is completely different. The amplitude here is three and negative three. So we just follow the same pattern. So it goes zero, maximum, minimum. There we go, like so. Uh, and then we go to the next one, which will be uh, here, here, here and here. So there we go. And there's our graph. So the reason we had to draw two complete cycles is because that is what the domain had asked us to do.